who's going to be here from EP Energy. So it should be a very, very good presentation. Uh, next, I'll have uh, is it Marisa and Marisa to come back up and uh, introduce our speakers here today. How are you? My name is Marisa K. Neary. I'm class of 2002. I've had the privilege to serve as team leader to our A-LEAF ISD group who started third grade in fall of 2011. As some of you know, CAMP stands for Caring Aggies Mentoring Program. We work with underprivileged students for a brighter, more successful futures. One of the unique characteristics of our particular group is that we have the largest number of non-Aggie and married couple mentors. Nate and Ashley represent this great dynamic. They bring a positive attitude and, connect, and connection to every field trip. One of the most fun activities we play is on our return trip back to the schools. It's called Name That Animal. What is maroon and tan and has poisonous spines as its protection? Anybody? It's called a lionfish. It's an educational and enter entertaining game, and everybody wins. Nathan Casper graduated from Ohio State University in 2009 with degrees in finance and Russian language. He is a business analyst with Shell Oil Deer Park Refinery, also an Ohio State University grad. Ashley Casper has a Bachelor's of Science in Interior Design. She is a kitchen and bath designer with Kitchen and Bath Concepts here in Houston. Nate loves coffee and roasts his own beans when he is not volunteering as an industrial firefighter. Ashley loves to cook and has a passion for music. They have a full house with two dogs and two cats. <laughs> we have had some wonderful experiences as a team with our students who are now in sixth grade. And I hope you look forward to hearing about our program from Nate, now. Nate and Ashley. Please help me welcome them. Howdy. We use that with our, our camp kids, so it's good to know that it's being used across the board here. Um, thanks for having us today. We're really excited to be here and talk about camp, um, the Caring Aggies Mentoring Program. Um, we, like Marissa said, we graduated from Ohio State University, and we moved down here about five years ago. And we were looking for a program with, you know, helping mentoring kids. We had done some work up at Ohio State with some, some children there. And we were looking for something similar down here in Houston. Um, my old boss actually is married to an Aggie. And um, he had introduced her to the program. And then she introduced us to the program. And, <clears throat> you know, the minute she told us about it and how you stay with the kids from third grade until they graduate, it, we knew it was something for us because it was really different from anything that we had ever done before, you know, where you visit with the schools and you get a change of students each year. This program seemed really special because you really get to give individualized attention and grow with the kids and help them learn and develop. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we, we were a little bit nervous, coming um, to the first meeting because we were Buckeyes and we didn't know how we were going to be received, you know, with the Aggies. And we, we knew y'all were big into football as well as we were. And so, um, but we really had nothing to worry about when we got there. We were welcomed with open arms and, you know, we thought that was really special to have, you know, a program that started with this school and has expanded out and welcomes anybody that's wanting to help out this program and it's such an amazing program so we're really lucky to be a part of it. <clears throat> that doesn't mean we don't badger back and forth about the football games <laughs> um, but we proudly wear our maroon shirts on our um, on our event day. Yeah so as Ashley mentioned we had previously been involved in, in some mentoring type activities and we were really looking forward to continuing that when we moved down here uh, so she brought this uh, to my attention, and I was unaware of the program before getting started, but taking a look at it briefly, we went to a couple preliminary meetings, and it seemed like something something that we really want to try. I mean, at first, the commitment, when you look at it on paper, being with a certain group of children from third grade all the way through high school graduation, I and mean, that seems like a long time, but it, it's 
very rewarding and just from the beginning we realized that this was a different program, something that we really enjoy being a part of. And some of the aspects of it that I think stand out are really that commitment. It's not just going to after school programs with whatever kids tend to show up or, or meeting and tutoring kids who are having trouble with homework. These are kids who want to be there. This camp program is a privilege that they are selected based on their you know, academic success and, and their the identification that there are kids that can be successful but have certain barriers or inhibitors in front of them that they just need a little bit extra help to make that linkage to get to the next step. So going into it, it's very rewarding to have that opportunity. Um, the academic portion of it is, is, is great because we, again, don't tutor them, but we see the results of their hard work in school. When we walked in uh, the other, I think it was last year, they had the honor roll display, and nearly every one of the kids in our group was on the honor roll, and it was just very rewarding to know that camp was an influence in that because they want to keep their grades up to participate in camp, but most importantly, for themselves. And that's the main purpose of this organization is not to steer the kids down a certain path or make them interested in things that weren't necessarily interested in them, but really open their eyes to say there's a great big world out there and you can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it and really commit to yourselves. Uh, aside from that, from, from the main purpose of the program, we benefited the kids in a lot of different ways, things that we often take for granted. Um, unfortunately, we noticed early on that a lot of the kids were showing up hungry or they were during the day really tired so we thought well you know maybe during the week they're getting breakfast lunch or other at school but on the weekend who knows what's what's going on so we started bringing in breakfast and snacks and things to take home and they definitely appreciated it uh, and also we realized that you know we talk about playing games on the bus just simple games like the animal game name your favorite food or name three types of apple or fruit so you can ask a kid what their favorite food is, and a lot of kids would say pizza, hot dog, otherwise. But it was amazing. Some kids had never tried a certain type of fruit or couldn't name three different types of vegetable. So we focused, the one year actually continuous focus on health and nutrition. We took a trip to HEB, down the aisles, had a quiz, got flashcards, just simple little things to introduce that to their lives. And whereas the beginning of our time with them in third grade, you know, you have a vegetable tray, nobody touch it now, they're, they're bartering over <laughs> cucumbers and carrots and just things like that. It's unexpected and fun that they're, just by the exposure to that, that we've been able to, to help them make healthier choices. Um, one of the really neat things that we found about camp is that the mentors really get to be involved kind of from start to finish, you know, from the first orientation with the students to even planning some of the field trips. So one of the field trips that was kind of near and dear to my heart was inspired by one of the students. Um, he, he's a more hyperactive kid, we'll say. He's kind of hard to keep sitting still on the bus and is always one with a higher volume on the bus. And one of the trips, we were going to the fish hatchery, and we always pass around a thank you note for all of the kids to sign and give to the, the, the event that we're attending, the place that we're going. And um, he asked if he could draw a picture next to his name. And so I said, sure, go ahead, draw a picture. And when the card got back to me, I was really impressed with what he drew. He had drawn a crab, you know, for the fish aqua theme we were going with. And I said, wow, would you like to draw, you know, address the letter, the outside of it, and maybe draw a few more pictures. And so he spent the entire time on the bus drawing pictures over the whole envelope, front and back. And it was really neat because he was really calm and focused and it was a creative outlet for him that he, we hadn't seen previously and um, it was also neat because a lot of the other students were giving him positive feedback saying how good of an artist he was where normally kids were you know it wasn't as positive being like quiet down things like that and so it was a really a really neat thing for me because as you know my field is creative and that's kind of how I get my energy out um, and I love to paint and draw and do anything artistic, really. And so I felt a connection to him kind of off the bat. And so we planned a painting pottery trip. And um, he really loved it, but also a lot of the other students connected to it. And so it was, it was neat for me to see, but it was also kind of an eye-opener to realize that, you know, each of these students has talents and skills and has interests. And 
we want to try to tap into all of those so that each kid can, you know, realize their potential and maybe even look into doing one of their interests as a career, like like I did myself. Uh, and the, the, the breadth and, and the variety of trips that we have are, are, are really neat and I think reflective of the interests, backgrounds, connections, networks that the mentors have, um, and also allow the students to get out and experience things that might not otherwise get to to do so, even though they live in Houston, they might not get to certain parts of town or get to certain museums or see certain things. And one trip that to me stands out that, that I really enjoy and I uh, believe a lot of the kids that we really enjoyed was a trip to the uh, San Jacinto Monument and the Battleship Texas. And that was just a real eye opener for them. Um, so at first we get to know the museum, uh, the ship's a big museum piece. Like first, we were concerned about losing the kids, or which we 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 did lose when we finally got them back. <laughs> Not hard to do on a battleship, but but uh, just to see them really interact with all of that and have an appreciation for the history, what went on, the the state they live in, the city they live in, just the significance of that, uh, and we incorporated some things that really made learning fun and showed them that they really could pick up a lot of things. It wasn't just like at school where they had to memorize facts. It was things that they, you know, we introduced games after we watched a movie and we had a, a, a trivia game afterward about the history of Texas. And where's this kid? We, we call him the professor because he just has a mind for that kind of stuff. And it's just great that, to see him in an element like that and then going through the museums and saying to them, all right, look at this case here, what do you think all this stuff was for? And it, it's interesting to see what their speculations are on it. And a lot of times they're, they're not far off or e they even say, you see something that they thought of a new way to use it. And it's just really neat to see them uh, take full opportunity of that. And um, for being on the battleship and aside from taking the pictures and, and acting like they were firing the guns or steering the ship, they were just amazed that of what that ship was what role it played in history, and this was all before the era of GPS and iPhones and the internet, and they were just really um, impressed with, with what it could do. And that was something that I, I really enjoyed taking on that trip. Um, there's also some very surprising things that we, that we don't necessarily know how they're going to react to when we take them um, to certain museums, and one that sticks out is the Houston Printing Museum, which I didn't know we even had it, the printing museum in Houston, but we went there and it was phenomenal. Um, we had an excellent guide there, really connected with the kids. We had skits, uh, a Disney film, interactive exhibits, and we took them from the beginning of the printed word to the modern day and everything in between, and they, they really enjoyed that. And that was something, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the mentors I mean, going into it weren't necessarily t like they didn't know how it was going to be, and they everybody really enjoyed it. So it, that the other benefit is these gigs and like having seen things about Houston that everybody might not get to get to experience, and it's great to experience that together with the kids. Yeah, like Nate said, you know, when we had first moved here from Ohio, we got involved with camp shortly after moving here, and so we hadn't really tapped into everything that Houston had to offer. So. The program was really neat for us because we got to experience things for the first time as well as they did. So it's really kind of fun because we're all learning and growing at the same time. Um, some of the field trips that we went on, we took a, a boat tour down the ship channel, which the kids, of course, loved. They actually got to see some dolphins, which was fun. Um, and we went to the Houston Zoo. I know you mentioned that the fourth graders went to the zoo this year. And um, we did a tour of Reliance Stadium. There was an Aggie connection there that helped us out. And um, did the Museum of Natural Science and the Health Museum. The Health Museum was really fun. The kids loved that. There was kind of something for everybody there. And that was, again, one of the ones that we found um, one of the girls who really had a connection with science. She was just, her knowledge was really impressive of the human body. And she just, you know, kind of schooled us all when we were going through the activities. And so... That was really fun. We, uh, we couldn't sure. get her to leave. It was all that. <laughs> yeah, but um, Marissa, I'm sure, remembers the screaming booth we had where you could, you could test how many decibels you could reach in this booth. So the kids loved that. I think your team got to like 101. Mine got to 99, and that was plenty for, for all of us. Um, but uh, as well as these kind of um, educational trips and indoor activities, we also go to a park after each um, field trip, and we eat a healthy lunch there. 
and then we play games. You know, they love freeze tag or soccer, and so we we realize that a lot of the students end up, you know, playing video games or computer games or watch movies with their siblings on the weekends when we ask them what they're doing, and so. What's nice is the program gets them outside and active and showing them how fun it can be to be outdoors. Um, we even plan throughout the year, I think it's typically one of the last ones we do a field day and do all of the fun things that you did in, you know, in grade school, like the tug of war and kickball tournaments and things like that. And the kids always love those days. You know, they're always pooped on the way home, but they have a good time. And it's not just the, the activities themselves that's beneficial. It's the time, the interactions we have before, after the trips, on the bus, that really allow us to connect and give focus, attention, to, to, to hear about what's going on in these kids' lives. And over, over time, the last couple of years, I mean, they're, they're developing, they're, they're growing up, and they're really opening up and sharing you know, what their concerns are, what, what some things are that they hope to do, and really looking to us for guidance they really they really want to know what our opinions are and that's something that i've enjoyed just again we're not trying to direct them down a certain path or say this is right or this is wrong but really getting them to believe in themselves and say this you know this might right now seem like a long way off because you you're in this grade or you have xyz to do beforehand but it's not something that's unachievable and uh, something that comes to mind was we were again on the bus playing a game it was what do you want to do when you grow up or what are you what are you interested in and the one girl says she wanted to make pizza so we're like okay that's that's great um but you know what about something more than that she's like well how about being a manager at a, at a pizza place we're like okay well you can even go beyond that what about owning a pizza place and, and going beyond just making the pizza, like managing the business and figuring out a way to share a pizza, how much you like pizza with somebody else and continuing that way. And it was something she hadn't ever really even thought of before. And you know, she was really excited about it. So like just, just little things, little discussions like that play a, play a significant part in, in getting these kids to open their eyes and recognize that, yeah, they, they have potential and the path that they're on now is something that could lead them there. Um, and they're also very interested in us. Uh, at first, they were kind of curious. So, so who are you people, and, and why are you here every month? What's, what, are you, what are you all about? And, um, but being with them for multiple years, we have a very close relationship now to where sometimes I think they know more about me than I know about myself. They, they, they were interested when we got engaged, and they wanted to hear about the wedding planning, and they were giving us tips and advice and things of that nature, so that was great. And they, they know all about our pets. but. Um, it's, it's very, uh, being close to them and recognizing that they do look up to you and they do, they do appreciate you committing to them, really the reinforces that you want to remain a positive role model in their lives and want to commit to helping them achieve whatever it is they do want to achieve. And uh, that's something that I, I think is the most valuable part about the participation here and what we've really taken away from it and, and also just figure out new ways to get them to experience things that that might otherwise be unreachable. And a lot of the, the trips and things that we do are made in part by donations or connections to, to certain individuals or organizations that allow us to do it. And that's the benefit of the, you know, the Aggie name on this, that recognition to where, sure, yeah, this is an Aggie group. You, know, you guys are welcome to come. And I can't tell you pretty much every, every trip we go on you know, is benefited by that. So that's definitely something that helps us out. Yeah, and like we, we had talked about being on the bus and Marissa even said the, the animal game, that was something that my family used to play on our car trips, on our road trips. So we introduced it to the kid one time, one, to the kids one, one trip. And, you know, that's typically how it goes is you talk to the person that's sitting next to you, the kid talking, sitting next to you, and then the kid across the aisle will get in on the conversation. And then it usually ends up the whole bus doing one activity. And so... That's always fun for me because it was something I did with my family and now I can do with them. And um, one of the times one of the little girls said, um, I feel like I have two families. I have my family at home and then I have my camp family. And we thought that was really sweet because, you know, it shows that they see us as, you know, support groups for them. They see that we care about them, that we love them and we want them to succeed. And so it just, it's, the whole program is just really rewarding for us. And 
you know, seeing them learn and, and just grow as people. I mean, um, you know, we talked about the school and seeing them, you know, improve their grades. They always come back and tell us how excited they were after their, you know, their testing happens. And they, they share with us, oh, I passed my math test. I got a B or I got an A on it. And so that's always nice how, you know, we get to see them grow. And that connection we have to them and the connection to the camp program extends beyond our, our direct interaction with them. Uh, you know, they're at school, they, they have different things going on in, in their lives in between the time that we're with them during the school year. Uh, but what we try to do is, is we, don't, we don't tutor, we don't provide specific help, but we, just the words of encouragement go a long way. Uh, something that stands out is the, the STAR testing, the standardized testing that they have. And that's something they prepare for a number of months for. And, and we understand the cases have some stress. They feel a lot of pressure to do well. And just talking them through it, uh, it has, I think, been very helpful in coming up with just you know strategies for studying or even little things like playing games. Some of the kids were saying that they were having trouble with math. So we started a multiplication table tournament. And some of the kids, by the end, that were doing really well were the ones that were resistant to do it or saying that they'd never passed the, the test. And, and they, they all passed, as far as I know, and, and um, just little things like that to just encourage them and have them believe in themselves that they have the capability to, to achieve their goals is, is very something that we take a lot of pride in. Absolutely, and just like you said earlier, leading by example. You know, that's, that's where we see the success in the students, the way that we interact with each other as mentors and the way that we interact with the students and seeing how they apply that to interacting with each other and with their families and friends at home. Um, you know, we're up here talking about how many ways the, the kids are benefited by this program, but we really feel like we've benefited so much from it. It's, yeah. it's just, it's so rewarding to see them grow and learn and develop and, you know, have these one of a kind, unique personalities. And, um, you know, we're going to our first camp trip this, this upcoming weekend and, Every year, that's always so fun for us because the kids get this huge smile on their face and they always run up and give you a big hug and there's just like nothing more rewarding than that. Um, you know, we've, we felt very grateful that we, you know, were introduced to this four years ago and, you know, we hope that we can inspire other people to get involved as well because it really is just a wonderful program. And thank you for having us today. Thank you. <laughs>it's really great and the connections alone like we were saying somebody with reliant you know had a connection and so people just kind of all around houston that are aggies are really you know happy to help out and things that we would normally need to pay admission for they they'll waive or give us a big discount for which has been really really nice so that we're able to to do some of the field trips or you know we can use some of the finances from people that have donated to to go towards those field trips Let's see, you guys are, this is your fourth year? Yes. Yep. Okay, yeah. so, and you're getting ready to start a brand new group, right? No, so we're sticking, we're still with our same group, but they're now in sixth grade. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. so you start with a third grade group, and then yeah, you, you progress know. with them. Yeah. So, so these kids, all these different activities that you do, whether it's the printing, the printing museum or the zoo or San Jacinto, do any of them, or, I mean, do you hear any buzz that any of them have seen any of those things before? No, it, it's typically people have never been to any of them before. Um, you know, they always talk about how they want to take their family to it, which is really neat, you know, that they want to share that. But it seems like, you know, the zoo maybe I think was one where some of the students had gone before. But for the most part, they didn't even know these places existed. And, you Hadn't know. Hadn't even been to certain parts of town before. Right. They just, yeah. they're, what they know is, is relatively limited and, and just again the basic things taking them out to see things is 
you know, something they might not other, ever get to do otherwise. Yeah. How many are in your group? We have, I think, about 17 to 19 now. Yeah. Um, and we, we, we combine with another school when we go on trips, so it's usually, you know, 30 to 40 kids. 40 kids yeah. yeah. And we've got a lot of mentors, which is amazing. Yeah. So that's 17. What kind of attrition have you had? What kind of what? I'm sorry. Attrition. People that fall off. Fall, they, sometimes it's a couple of year, and they'll end up adding more students if they can. But um, you know, something that was brought to our attention in the beginning was that the 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 families tend to move around a lot mm -hmm. because just if an apartment's running a, a deal, you know, next door, then they'll move. To that apartment complex and it'll change the school of the kids unfortunately and so but we've been we've been pretty pretty good i think our number we've started been, maybe at 21 or 23 and so we're at like 17 to 19. Yeah, um, we've maintained a, a very uh close core group of the kids and then some of them and it's not just you know moving but again it's a privilege for them to participate which is an important component of the program because they don't just get to come. Um, unfortunately, we've lost some kids for behavioral issues or otherwise. Uh, and I think just like one for that, though. But um, but regardless, so uh, but it's something that we know is a motivator to them that right. regardless of, of other challenges, that they do want to come and participate in this. And up until I think I believe it was like sixth grade, fifth grade, or, or so that they, they can't add other kids to the group. But after a while, they, they will, they cap it off, but you'll progress with them, you know. And, yeah. and as the kids, we're up, we're, our grade is getting up to a coordinating challenge because after this year, the group go to different schools mm -hmm. for junior high and high school. But what's great about that, what's great about the program, because the, the oldest group is now in 11th grade or 10th grade? 11th, I think 11th, yeah. So, so the schools that we work with really work with us in trying to help keep students that we've had since their grade together. But we do lose a lot in the next couple of years. They diminish down to about 10. And of course, mentors and lives, uh, you know, get in the way too. So the groups are much smaller as you, as you get older. But it is still a successful program. Yeah. Freddie, of course, has, has had some wonderful stories that he's shared with us about the older groups um, and what they've been able to accomplish. And it's a relatively young organization, if I'm not mistaken. It started out in 2005, around that time frame. So just about enough time when recently when the first first group graduated. Um, and you know, every year we have a new group. So every year with more experience and just getting the word out and getting people involved, that improves the chances of people maintaining their participation in that. Yeah, and we do have a lot of parents. You know, some of the parents, you know, were. We're waiting there for them to pick their kids up, but there are a lot of parents that get their kids there early, and so you know they're there on time. And the the parents, you know, always smile and talk to us about the kids and how excited the kids are to be there. And so you know, a lot of it does depend on the parents and how much they you know support the group and get their kids there on time and pick them up on time so that they can come each week and. Um, you know, sticking with the same same school, obviously. So, there are some parents in particular I know just that are just so happy with having their kids be a part of it. Yeah. You talked about uh, you know meals just a minute ago. Are there are there other examples that you you run across that you just just open your eyes and go, oh wow, never never dreamed they ever seen that or uh, didn't have access to this or that. A lot of it was the food, kind of, because it just, you know, things that we, I know Nate and I um, kind of grew up with that was just sort of normal to us. You know, our parents would make us meals when we woke up in the morning, and um, it was never something that we had to worry about, and even going, going on field trips with our families, you know, going on to different things, and, you know, even going on a trip outside of the state. You know, a lot of the kids had never, you know, heard of Ohio or never, you know, heard of other states or been to other states. And that was something that was kind of, you know, it kind of struck me because it seemed very normal to me growing up to do those sort of things and visit family. Um, and so, you know, not that that's like, you know, a detriment to, to them growing up, but it it just kind of 
makes you think about what you do have and what you can offer and, you know. Um, They're relatively limited frame of reference. And, and yeah. there are gigs that, you know, have, that they talk about doing, doing other things, but with, you know, with the food, not only not having a lot of uh, experience in some cases like fruits or vegetables or things that weren't from fast food, but when we go to a farm or go in, in like the fish hatchery that we went to, had, they had no idea that food came from somewhere else other than a grocery store or a drive through window in a lot of cases. So they were just, uh, especially that fish, fish hatchery to see, I mean, it was, it was really interesting for me, but to, for them to understand like the whole ecosystem and, and how that all works for, for to be able to eat seafood is not a guarantee and there's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into it and especially some of these kids that like the zoo or liked things they were like well this is a career opportunity if you like to take care of animals or you like to be outdoors or, or nature things there's a wide range of activities for you it's not just things that you might see on tv or i mean even going into the things that they like to do Ashley mentioned that if you talk to them about what they're doing on the weekend, it's a lot of times watching TV or watching uh, or playing video games where you can say, well, hey, I mean, we know you walk, like watching those shows where they sing and perform or you like this certain performer. Well, a lot of the kids are very talented and, you know, they're creative in their creative strengths and singing, dancing, art, things of that nature. And it's, you know, discussing with them what their ambitions are, saying, hey, you could actually be somebody like that someday or if you like playing video games, or if you like doing these sort of, you like cars that they see on the highway, you know, there's a lot of math and science and stuff that you're doing in school that can be applied. It's not what you're doing in school isn't just an ends into itself. You can really connect the two of what you're interested in and, and get, the, get the mechanics behind doing that to actually make something like that for yourself or apply that to a career someday. Yeah, something that just reminded me of that was the, um, you know, the pizza story where that girl wanted to work at a pizza shop when she grew up and um, and other kids were, you know, like, I want to be a rapper when I grow up or I want to be a football star. And, you know, while that does happen for some people, that's not the most realistic, you know, career choice for majority of, of people out there. And so, you know, kind of showing them that there's other things, you know, out there in the world and you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be whatever you want to be, you know, but you got to apply yourself now. And even the, you know, some of the students that were really into the sports, like football, I know we, we talked to them about how, you know, the playmaking and how, how there's different logical thinking that goes into even the sports. And More so, than just what's on TV and, and yeah. like saying, hey, I want to be a baseball player at some point, but then I got interested in this or other things to consider and, and just small discussions like that. Uh, get them thinking. So we're, you know, we're going into, they're going into sixth grade right now, and it's interesting to see what we've been doing in terms of activities for more fun and enrichment, just exploratory things as we progress, uh, kind of strategically getting a, a game plan together for taking some of these kids that like have demonstrated, you know, interest in health sciences or an interest in math or interested in history. And, you know, as, as the group will likely decline in size. The ones that stay, we probably will be able to get more individualized trips or structured activities together for that. And I just found out this year the school has, has put out some publications which actually we will be piggybacking on for like career discussions. And I mean, I read the brochure with that one of the team leaders meeting and it was, it's a lot more pointed direction and conversation to help the students kind of explore their options it's been a lot of fun, you know, these last three, four years, but we're getting, everybody's getting a little more mature and interested yeah. and knowing themselves better, so the school has now distributed to us some literature that we'll be using with them, and hopefully we'll be able to take some of our Saturdays to do more, I don't want to say workshop sessions, but something more directed at university selections, what really, you know, financial aid packages, the stuff that their parent, you know, if their parents are working seven days a week and they're being raised by their grandmother or whatever, we're that extra support. And that's, that is one of the fundamental goals, is to just help them graduate high school and, and go to some college, whether that's a two, two year associates or something, to help, to help them better their future. We do that's take them to, during the, all those years, we do take them to the Galveston campus and we take them to the College Station campus. So. 
We do give them a little much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I guess it's safe to assume that when these kids go back to school during the week, there probably is some buzz going around about mm -hmm. what they do over the weekend. Yeah. So does that create any kind of, are, are there any opportunities for some kid that did not get in at the first go around to, if there is an opening to? Yeah, I think there the is. I, I think you could probably speak a little bit better to that, but I, I think if, if there is an opening and we're able to take on another student, because I know we had a few come, come after the first year or the second year come into the program. Feedback till up until fifth grade. Um, after that, due to the proportions of size, I mean, then it's probably a Freddie, our director question, but um, I, I don't really have an answer as to why we don't do it. I think it has something to do with the challenges of, you know, sports kids. We lose kids mm -hmm. to sports, football, and other things yeah. like that. Um, unfortunately, there are some cases where not, not in our group particularly, but some students have, you know, been let go of the program because they weren't in full attendance throughout the year or their grades were below um, passing. And, and those are the things that we kind of predicate on our participation and involvement. So that's the standard that they have to uh, work towards. Um, well, Brady yeah. does tell a story about one kid who moved out of district and then came back mm -hmm. and he, he wanted to come back into the program. And, Randy made him write a, a letter asking to be allowed back into the program and asking why he should be allowed back into the program. And he said he wrote a very, very uh, literate letter uh, asking to be let back in and then living back in. Yeah. We've seen a lot of siblings of the students because mm -hmm. a lot of times the whole family will kind of come and drop off the kid. And so we've seen a lot of siblings say, I can't wait. I want to be able to be in camp. And I wish I could come with you today. So. You know, I think it does get passed down a little bit and hopefully inspire some of the other kids to, you know, get their grades up and be good to go when, they, when they're eligible. Yeah. A couple of questions. One, uh, do you guys, you all convince me when to have Ohio State as their backup school? <laughs> Not yet. We did teach the kid OHIO, <laughs> but, um, you know, to much a grin the, the, the other. Out, so. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, worry about that. <laughs> Um, but no, we haven't talked to anybody up at Ohio State about it, but, um, yeah, it's such a, it's such a unique program. And I, I mean, I think it would be really cool to see about, you know, spreading it across the yeah. nation because, yeah. and especially that y'all have, you know, kind of done it from start to finish before. And so that really helps with the curriculum and things like that to kind of get it started. Cause I know, you know, the first year the programs were all laid out for us and, and then the second year, we started to be able to plan some of them and really get involved. And we so. definitely like to keep it interesting. I mean, we're a little partial. We have group meetings, you know, before every every field trip to kind of get the planning. And if, if we all look at each other, really you think we're gonna like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't remember one of the examples, but we had done several things, and so we try to we try to make it fun and, and yeah. keep. It Interesting and it always is. I mean, I'm not the big history buff. You know, he's the logic history person and I'm the artsy person, but I've had so much fun on all the trips. Like the printing one was just unbelievable. I mean, it. we were both kind of like, oh man. But when we went, this the guy was just unbelievable and he got all the kids up there doing, you know, doing the printing press. Like and making copies of things. Yeah, and, and it yeah. was... The Declaration of Independence. Everybody went home with an actual press piece of... Yeah. 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 The guy was. It was a really neat, neat program. And so, and it's been fun. Trips and out and just all the kids did not enjoy. I don't know. I don't think That's, so. Actually, we have a good track record of being flexible and recognizing when we need to mix things up a little bit. Yeah. So, and again, not every trip is something that each of the kids is into, but we kind of. That's what we, the mentors are, are good at connecting and recognizing that and. Uh, engaging the kids to say, all right, well, you might not be interested in this, but how about this if you thought of that, and, and getting them yeah. somewhat interested. And then we usually cap off trip with lunch or go to a park or, or something yeah. uh, something different than what the main the main event was. Yeah. But no, I can't, I can't recall anything that was just... The boat the, tour yeah. got rain. They, there was a lot of rain, but that didn't yeah, stop them. Yeah, maybe natural <laughs> effects, like, yeah, like weather. But yeah, other than that, no, every, everything, there, there's been feedback that they, you know, there's some things that they prefer to do or prefer not to do again, but 
I think we've, we haven't really repeated anything, and we have a lot of interest in, in trying new things. And that's, that's one, of the, one of the parts about it that I, I, I enjoy planning and being involved with figuring out things to do, because it isn't a set itinerary. You know, we have yeah, suggestions yeah. or things that, you know, some of the other groups have done before, but it's really uh, up to us and we coordinate it. You know, Marissa keeps the, keeps the, the group, you know, in, in, in order in terms of who's doing what month to month, but you know, we work very well together and I think the kids really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. We've done some fun things and the kids enjoy it and we enjoy it. We look forward to it each month and over the summer we're ready to get back into it and see how the kids have grown over the years and over the summer, over the months, rather, so. Yeah, they're going to need some new shirts. That's probably... <laughs> yeah, probably. So I'm not sure how much y'all stay plugged into the club, but, you know, just on behalf of the club, we are really proud of what you guys do and what the camp program is. It's it's kind of a flagship for us. It's something we really love to talk about. It's uh, it's a great program. It really is. And I'm just tickled with that. appreciate y'all's time and effort in yeah. doing that. It's uh, our pleasure, it's definitely. Thank you. It's, it, it's, thank you for the opportunity to share about it, and that's really, I think, what will lead to greater success is getting more people aware of it. And you know, we're you know, by our own example, it's not necessarily that you're an Aggie or have an Aggie background, but it's definitely a great organization to be a part of. And you know, we've been welcomed in, and we're certainly not the only ones that aren't Aggies, but definitely feeling like honorary Aggies if if you'll let us be. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, been, unless there are any other questions, I know there's probably going to be a few questions afterwards. So um, we'll wrap up and uh, close for this week. And thanks, and giggle, and thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you. Thank you.